Oh boy. Rub your hands together. Start clapping because we got a juicy little video today that will help you raise your SAT score. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the simple, simple trick, simple SAT math hack that will allow you to solve every single question on the SAT before you even read the question. And by using this secret little trick back in high school, dude, I was able to go from 430 to 870 on the math section overnight, just like that. So if you are in- All right, guys, so <laughs> what I'm actually gonna share with you in this video is going to be the secret weapon that I use during my private tutoring sessions and inside my math program, SAT Math Accelerator. One of the reasons why students struggle with any SAT question is that they look at the question and they're like, what the heck am I supposed to do here? However, this trick will tell you exactly what to look for, tell you exactly what to do, and finally get you to the answer. The reason I'm sharing this with you guys is that the next SAT is right around the corner. And as I do for every single one of my students, I want you to do well on the SAT. And by knowing this trick, you'll be able to score higher on your next SAT and get the questions right you otherwise would have missed. In a couple of weeks or a couple of months down the road, when you get your scores back, you might consider joining SAT Math Accelerator because that's where all the juicy big improvements happen. And we have this policy where if your score doesn't go up, you don't have to pay. You can learn more about the program in the pinned comment down below by following the link. But the trick I'm about to share with you in this video will help you solve a lot more of these triangle questions. And all the questions that I will be using in this video are also going to be available in the pinned comment down below. So if you want to print them out and try them with me, that's going to be even better. Or if you don't want to do all that, you just want to watch the video and just get it out of the way, that's completely fine too. So before we get started, guys, Go down below, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's get started with today's video. So first things first, let's go over exactly what you need to look for. So I call them as triggers because whenever you see these two things on the SAT, the question is screaming at you that the question is testing you on special right triangles. And in order for you to solve that question, you have to use special right triangles. But how do we know whether the question is testing you on this? Well, the first thing you want to look out for is going to be the specific angles. It could be 30 degrees, 45 degrees, or 60 degrees. And the second set is going to be the radicals. Whenever you see square root of two or square root of three on the SAT, it's a sign that it's testing you on special right triangles about 98% of the times. Because you're not going to see these square root two or square root three often on the SAT. But when they do show up, chances are, is testing you on special right triangles. And just for recap, special right triangles are referring to two triangles that have 45, 45, 90, and have a ratio of X root two like that, or another triangle that looks like a 30, 60, 90, and has a ratio of X, X root three, and two X, okay? So now that we know exactly what to look for in a question, we're gonna move on to some practice questions and see how these things happen during the real SAT. Now, we're gonna start off with a medium difficulty question. So let's look at number 19. So this is from section four because calculator is allowed. And the moment you see this question, what do you see? Well, first of all, we see triangles, but more importantly, we see 30 degrees and 60 degrees, which is one of the triggers for special right triangles. And even on the answer keys, we see square root of two, square root of three, which is another trigger for special right triangles. Now, like this question gives us no option. This one is definitely testing you on these special right triangles. So this one's kind of obvious, but we'll go over more hard questions in the future, but let's go through this one as an example. So we have a triangle right here and we're looking for the length of AD, which is going to be this side length right there. And because it's a right triangle with 60 and 90 over here, automatically we know this is going to be 30 degrees right there. And according to special right triangles, we know that 30, 60, 90 triangles follow a specific ratio of X, X root three and two X. So side opposite from 30 is going to be X. So opposite from 30 is going to be X right here. 60 is going to be X root three right here. And opposite from 90 is going to be two X. And we know that, okay, our two X is currently is equal to 12, which means our X is equal to six because you divide both sides by two which means this side is going to be six. This is going to be six root three. And we're looking for AD, right? 
Well, here's the thing. Whenever you have a triangle and when you divide it by half like that, and the height, the new generated height is forming a right angle right there, these two side length are going to be the exact same distance. Again, if the triangle is getting splitted in the middle and the splitter is forming a right angle with the base, that means it's bisecting the base, which means these two side lengths are going to be the equal length. And because we know DC is 6, we know that AD is also going to be 6. Our AD is going to be 6. Answer is going to be choice B. Again, this question would have been easy for some people, but most people it's not going to be that obvious. So the main takeaway here is whenever you see a triangle question, look for these two things. Because whenever you have either of these things present in the question, it's going to be testing you on special right triangles. Luckily, this one had both the angles and the radicals, but it's most oftentimes it's going to have only one of the two as the question gets harder. So if you kind of understand what the trigger is and know what to look for in the question, let's go to a harder question. It's going to make more sense as we go down the road. So let's take a look at this question. A square is inscribed inside a circle, right? Inscribed just means it's drawn inside of the circle. Circle with a radius of six square root of two inches. What is the perimeter of the square in inches, right? So we are looking for the perimeter of the square that is drawn inside of the circle. And how can we find that? Well, first of all, before we even start, this is number 20 from the no calc section. This is the last question of the whole section, which means it's the difficulty is very, very high. I think this is more of difficulty four out of five question on the SAT. Now, how are we going to find the perimeter of the square, right? Well, before we even do anything, you see, what do you see? You see a square root of two, which is one of the triggers that we have learned. So chances are this question, there's a very high chance that this is actually testing you on special right triangles. So when you approach this question and try to solve it, try to solve it using special right triangles. And John, is it always going to work? Is it going to work 100%? No, dude, it's 98% success rate. So just got to shoot your shot and see how it goes. So the first thing we're going to do with these kind of questions where it gives us a bunch of words is we're going to start visualizing. And if you're not sure what visualizing is, I'm going to, I had made a video on this. It's also going to be linked in the pinned comment down below, which you can watch after finishing this video. So visualizing just means drawing out this information. And we have a square inscribed in a circle, right? So we have a beautiful circle, I know. And we have a square drawn inside of it. Okay. And this circle has a radius of six radical two. So center to the corner is going to be radical radius of six radical two. And based on this information, we are trying to find out what the perimeter is, right? Well, hold on. If we draw this triangle like that, because we were, it, because we see a sign for special right triangles, right? If we draw it out into a triangle like that, it becomes a six radical two. And another thing we know is that it's a square, which means it's going to be right angles all around. And if they are dividing this square into half, we know this angle is going to be 45 degrees and 45 degrees, right? And what do you know? Now you have a 45, 45, 90 special right triangle. And if that's the case, it follows a specific side length ratio of X, X, X root two. So the, the side length opposite from the 90, 90 degree angle is going to be X root two. The side opposite of 90 is X root two. So the side opposite of 90 is going to be X root two. And what's the side opposite of 90? Well, six root two, six root two is equal to 12 root two. So your diameter or the hypotenuse of the triangle is 12 root two, which means your X value is going to be 12. And because this X over here is now 12, we know that this side and this side are also going to be 12 as well, which means it becomes 12 here, 12 here. And square have all same side length throughout, which makes it 12 over here, 12 over here, which means the perimeter of the square is going to be 12 times four, which is going to be 48. That is your answer. Got it? So even though this question has nothing about 
triangles. It tells you nothing about triangle. The fact that it has radical two in it, two in it, that's a sign. That's a surefire sign that, oh, this question could be testing you on special right triangles about 98% of the times. That is the college board's way of giving you a hint and screaming at you, bro, brother, this question is special right triangles. You have to use that to solve it. And just like every question on the SAT, if you know exactly what to look for, the question just becomes a joke. This question was literally the hardest question. It was supposed to be the hardest question because it's the last question, but it was such an easy question if you know what to look for. Okay, that was a lot of work, but are you ready for one more? You wanna do one more? All right, let's do one more. Let's get this drilled into your head. So this question again is number 19 from section three, which means it's one of the harder question, one of the hardest question on that whole section. But let's make it super easy. So the moment you see the question, before you even read the question, what's the first thing you see? You see square root of three. And whenever you see square root of three, that's a sign that you're dealing with special right triangles. We know exactly what to think about. Let's go into the question. Number 19, in the XY plane above, O is the center of the circle and the measure of AOB, AOB, this angle right there is going to be pi over A radians. What is the value of A, right? So we are looking for the value of A right there. And radians is just another way to represent angles. Don't worry too much about it. We're gonna get there in a second. So long story short, we are looking for the measure of this angle right there. And how can we find it? Well, the fact that we see a radical three right there, I wanna think about special right triangles. And I'm gonna make a triangle out of it. And to do that, I'm gonna to try to form a triangle within this question. And I don't know, that kind of looks like partial triangle to me. So I'm just going to drop it down like so. Okay. So if I drop it down like that, now we have a triangle, but do we know any of the angles or ratios or side length? We don't, but we'll find out pretty soon. Coordinate A over here has a X of square root of three and Y of one, right? So from here to all the way over here, we know that this side length is going to be square root of three. And the height is going to be what? Well, the y value, height is going to be one, right? And doesn't that look familiar? One, square root of three, square root of three. So hold on, maybe it has to do with 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's draw out 30, 60, 90 triangle. Beautiful triangle again. So we have a 90 degree right there. And we know that the side opposite from angle 30 is going to be x. Opposite from 60 is going to be x root three. And if we think about it, hold on. If this side is one, if I put this as one, then this side automatically becomes square root three. So one and root three, one and root three. See how that's matching up? So from that, we know, okay, it's going to be right angle here, which means the angle opposite from one, the angle opposite from one is going to be 30 degrees. The angle opposite from side length of one is going to be 30 degrees. So by looking at these two relationships right here, we can tell that angle AOB is 30 degrees. And is that going to be our answer? No, do not fall for the trap. We're not looking for the measure of AOB, we're looking for it in terms of radians, right? So how do we convert 30 degrees into radians? All you have to do is multiply degree times pi over 180. That's how you convert degree into radians. So to do that, go do the exact same thing, pi times 180, which becomes 30 pi over 180, zeros cancel out, three over 18, which becomes one over six pi, which is just pi over six. And is that our answer? And nope, do not fall for the trap. We're looking for the value of A. So we have pi over six, and that's also similar to pi over A. So how do you find value of A? Well, A is equal to six. Got it? So again, this question probably seems like a joke now, but it was meant to be one of the toughest questions in the whole section. And the thing is, it mentioned nothing about triangles. And the reason why it's a hard question is because it doesn't tell you anything about triangles. But if you know exactly what to look for, it's screaming at you that you have to use special right triangles. That's why it's so important for you to know exactly what to look for in each question. And by teaching you every single trigger you need to know for the SAT, 
you know exactly what to look for inside of every single question. And that's why the students inside the program can get those juicy, juicy results. So for your next SAT, make sure you have these triggers drilled inside of your head so that whenever you see these questions on the SAT, whenever you see square root of three or square root of two or 30, 60 or 45 degree angle, you know you have to think about special right triangles. If you guys found this video helpful, hit the like button, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel. You guys already know what to do. And that's going to be it. And I'll see you on the next video.